So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it is that you can graph this. Now, as we've done in everything graphing the complex plane, right? There are hard ways and easy ways to do this, right? Now, I'm going to show you the most efficient path. It requires more visual intuition and geometric reasoning. But what it avoids is just a mess of error prone and very inefficient algebra. Okay? Um, I will show you that method, just not here. Um, but for now, let's have a think about this equation and what it gives us, right? So, for starters, arg of z minus 1 on z plus 1. Immediately, you know there are two points, two reference points that you can put onto your complex plane that sort of the rest of the shape will be built off. What are those two points? Plus minus one. Plus or minus one on the real axis, right? So you go ahead, if you haven't already, and, and pop those in. So I'm just going to, that's my scale. That's all right. Plus or minus one, these are my reference points. Then you look over to the right hand side, you see it's pi on four, right? So you're like, pi on four, that's a, an acute angle. It's an acute angle, which gives me what kind of arc? Big one or little one? Uh, it's a major arc, right? A big arc, small angle. Big arc. So therefore, I know I'm going to have either something big up here or something big down here. Now, I've kind of cheated and shown you by the way I've drawn my complex plane. I already know which one I'm going for, the top or the bottom. How did I know that it would be up the top? What piece of information told me that? Again? Yeah, very good. I go from the numerator to the denominator. This is 1, and this represents minus negative 1, right? So I'm going to go from 1 anti-clockwise around to negative one. Okay? So at that point, maybe you were confident enough to eyeball an arc like that. But there's a lot of information still missing off of here, right? Um, I've got this and this, and then I'm like, what, what else have I got? I've got no Cartesian equation. Uh, and that's because I've got no center, I've got no radius. Okay? So this is where I said you need some geometric reasoning to help you. Okay? Now, for example, I'm interested in finding that point up there for sure, but it's going to take me some reason to get here, uh, there rather. So, what I want to put on here is some extra bits of construction that will help me. Okay? For starters, uh, I'll use a different color here just to highlight it for you. I'm going to go ahead and draw the angle up to that point, standing on, uh, in this segment, I should say. Right? Now, because of the equation over here, what's that angle? What's the size of it? This whole angle is pi on 4. Okay? Now, for reasons that become clear in a second, I'm actually not going to put the whole angle. I'm going to put half of it, which I know sounds weird. But I can do that because of the symmetry of my shape. And I should say, you're like, but what if it's not symmetrical? Okay? We're going to give you equations that make this not impossible to find. Um, if you have weirdo looking oblique arcs like this, it really is completely impractical. right? So we'll give you something that makes it relatively easy. So I'm going to put pi on 8 up here. Okay? Now the reason why that's useful to me is because knowing roughly the center of the circle should be, I don't know, I'm just going to eyeball it around there. Right? I can do a whole bunch of constructions that are really going to help me here. For instance, if I've done it roughly, yeah, I'm okay with that. If you have a look at this triangle that I've just created, over here on the left hand side, right? what kind of triangle is that? That's an isosceles triangle. right? Because if I'm saying that's roughly where the center is, then these two are radii. right? So Equal sides are opposite equal angles. See that? It's pi on 8 over there. And I've done this trick a couple of times, right? This angle here and this angle here are interior angles that are opposite. I'll use another color now. Here it is. They're opposite this exterior angle. See that? So therefore, the exterior angle equals the sum of the opposite two interior angles. So what's this angle? Pi over 4. Right? Which means that down here, because it's these are the coordinate axes, so that's right angles, down here you've got, what have you got? Right. Another isosceles triangle, right? And thankfully, because I know, back to this color, because I know this distance here, which is which is one, that means I know this distance here, also one. So now I have coordinates, right? Um, this point here, in fact, I'm not going to put brackets, and this point here, because it's one unit above the real axis, in complex terms, I would call that. I. You happy with that? Right. Now that I know that, I can also work out a whole bunch of other things, right? This is one, this is one, what's the radius? It's root 2. It's root 2, which means, and this is where I was going, right? To get up to this point up here, I have to go from uh, this point here, which is one unit above, and I've got to go another root 2, right? So therefore, this would be 1 plus root 2, lots of I, because I'm in the imaginary direction. Okay? Can you tell me the equation of the circle from this? 
What do you think? Square. X squared, because our normal circles, we start at the origin and then we shift, but I haven't shifted horizontally anywhere. I'd have shifted vertically though. This is, um, yeah, the center, the center has gone up one unit. So it's Y minus one squared. And then what's on the right hand side? Two, because that's the square of the radius, which we've already established as root two. Make sense? Now I'm going to stop there. Like I said, there is a long and awkward way to algebraically do this. I'll show you, but I hope if you look at that, you'll be convinced, oh, I don't want to go there if I can possibly avoid it. And the geometric thinking is actually the main thing we're looking for. Want to add anything, Mrs. Leach? Um, not about that. Okay. Um, Emmanuel, question. Uh, if, we, if I use the circle geometry, I need to quote the, like the rules. Like center angles is twice and any inscribed angle extension by the... Sure. So um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this question. I have deliberately avoided using some of the circle geometry properties that I know you haven't covered for like a long time. But if you're going to use them, you got to tell me why, right? So the short answer to your question is yes. Last one, Jia. Oh yeah, for the, the, the Cartesian equation, do we also have, also have to include one greater than zero? Ah, okay. So do you need to include y is greater than not including zero to make this correct? Okay. Um, the short answer is, in this case, absolutely. Like I don't have the whole circle down here, do I? However, I do want to point out, if you just come back and look at some of these arcs that we were drawing before, right? You see how they're off at an angle? They are what we call oblique, right? Which just means off at an angle, right? You can't simply say, oh, x is less than this, y is greater than that, right? It doesn't quite work because you don't have a nice horizontal cutoff, right? You'd actually have to use a couple of different uh, restrictions to tell you which part of the domain that it is. Um, but generally, this equation and this diagram, they are my answer, right? You can see unambiguously from here which part I'm including and which part I'm not. Does that make sense?